What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 135 of the Rise to Glory here at Gibraltar Apex and today we are going to be taking on Benfica in the UEFA Champions League first knockout round. Of course if you missed last episode go check it out as always it was the conclusion to our Champions League group stage and ultimately as you guys all know if you watched that episode we finished second in the group resulting in us taking on Benfica who actually topped their group. They have a, a very good little squad and uh, they're a team that we've played a few times over the years. So if we just look at their key player you can see Rebelo or Rebelio Jose I guess that's how we'll go with saying his name Brazilian. Looks like a very good little striker for them. 32 though so aging a little bit. Got a good goalkeeper there in Carlo Rios. Regis is a player who actually I think I looked at at one point. We've got him scouted. Did he used to play in Brazil? Let's check. Let's check. He did. Okay, he played for Sao Paulo and he moved to them at the start of this year. I thought the name rang a bell. He looked like a very good centre-back at the time. I'm kind of annoyed that I didn't know about that. I might have tried to go in for him at £8 million. Actually, now that I think about it, we've missed the winter transfer window. And, uh, well, this works out well, doesn't it? We can segue because we have signed a centre-back. We've also had a few other transfers. We'll talk about the other transfers, I think, to begin with. A few players going on out. Uh, Pereira left the club. Fernandez left the club. Uh, the club. Matt Proctor left the club for 500k, just one of the kind of domestic sales that we did to Manchester 62. Um, and also, you may have noticed Fire Loss going out. We'll talk about him first. £10 million the fee we received. At uh, 22 years old, this guy's an absolutely insane winger for us, if I'm honest. And part of me did want to keep hold of him, but ultimately, we don't really play with wingers that often in our system these days. And whilst this guy came in to kind of perhaps be the successor to Paul Smith, he's never going to be what I considered to be kind of good enough to be our first choice out and out winger and uh well as you can see here Southampton came in with 10 million pounds and uh ultimately I decided that was enough money for it to be kind of worth selling fire loss so uh he will be leaving the club and he has left the club the 22 year old um I'm kind of happy with the amount of money we receive really for a player I consider to be a bit of a fringe player um, and the other bigger transfer, I guess, the window was Fernandez, who left for Hanover. Now, um, you guys may remember, I was looking at a player from Standard de Liège who was a striker called Walid, I can't remember how you say his second name, Gwendouze, that's how we'll say it, uh, the Belgian player. I did decide to sign him for £16 million, and I felt like the striker department was just a little bit bloated in our squad. You know, we had uh, Rildo, Mosca, Gwendouze, or oh, Gwendouze even. Uh, and Gerard, and also Paul Smith and Mora when he's fit, of course Mora leaving at the end of the year, but I kind of felt like we had one too many strikers, and I'd brought Fernandez in kind of in the summer of this year, and he'd been a good player for us, but uh, well, we brought him in for £2.7 million, pounds, and uh, we were able to set him on for a profit, so I was kind of happy to do that, Hanover picked him up, I think it just helps to balance our squad a little bit, it's good to recoup a little bit of money, and also make you know, a quick book on a play. We don't necessarily need to make money uh, kind of through our transfers in our current financial situation, but it's nice to do so, and I kind of feel like that bid for Fernandez was a, a good one to take. The other player who left was Pereira, the kind of former right winger, a player we've known is going to be leaving us for quite some time now. He's gone to Fiorentina for 500k. It's a, a minuscule fee, really. He gave us a good few years, but you can see... I don't know, I, I mean, you can see, even see, th this year he's performed well out on the right, but we have Junior out on the right, who I do want to play more, and I think he's going to kind of do well for us. You can actually see Pereira didn't make an appearance for us this year before moving in January. Last year, you know, he did contribute with 14 goals and 19 assists, but I don't know, we've got Junior who can play out on the right, and I rate this guy a little bit more, and the 22-year-old, he's going to need first-team football. Pereira was leaving at, at the end of the year on a free, so I kind of feel like to get £500,000 for him. Uh, I can live with that and move on. Anyway, as I mentioned, there was a signing to be made um, kind of in this window. And actually, you can see two fairly hefty ones. We already talked about Gwendouz, who came into the side of the Belgium. I feel like we need a nickname for this guy. I'm going to come up with one because Gwendouz, it's, it's just a bit of a mouthful, really. Um, but this guy, the Belgium, a very good, talented striker. Not the greatest with his first touch. But he's got good physicals, particularly his agility and strength. Really nice mentals as well. He's good in the air, you know, 15 jumping reach, 17 heading. If he can just kind of work on his off-the-ball composure and finishing a little bit, he's going to be a top, top striker for us. And at 20 years old, already in the Belgium squad, delighted to get him in. You can see lots of positives to be taken away, according to my assistant. And I think alongside Gerard. These two could make a really nice little partnership, of course, both Belgium. We are actually training Gerard to play centre-attacking mid. It's a role that he's picked up relatively quickly. And uh, I think long-term, we might even play a system where Gwendouz, Gerard, and then, of course, Mosca, kind of playing a little trio in the kind of attacking midfield department with Gerard sat off the two front men. I feel like that could work really, really well for us. And uh, I think that's what we're going to kind of try and work towards with this team, because I feel like, certainly going forward, we have, you know, really kind of free hot prospects and hot talents in Mosca's 
Gerard and Gwen Dues. Anyway, there was one more transfer that came in on the ins, and it's a big one. And uh, to be honest, I probably wouldn't have spent this kind of money normally, particularly on this kind of player. However, we have the money from the TV deal. The, the money was there to be spent. There wasn't really any other players I was looking at, and uh, I kind of wanted to get this guy in. And the player is Jorge Assad, or as we're going to call him, Assad, because I feel weird saying Jorge. That's how you say his name, because he's South American, not George. I learned that from a previous series. Uh, but this guy, £34 million spent, highest earner at the club. It is ludicrous and crazy money, but at the same time, we've got him from FC Porto. He's 22 years old, 11 caps for Argentina. To me, he looks like a really solid centre-back. You can see his current ability is a fairly good rating for the senior side, but he has a ton of potential. And I'm hoping that he's going to continue to improve in line with kind of what my... Uh, staff are predicting you can see professional individual leading player for the Premier division obviously international's really good um reliable when it comes to kind of not letting players get past him and he has really good positioning as well and all in all i think he offers something really nice to the side of course you're probably running jack you have mustafa you have mcmaster what's the plan with the center backs well, the plan with the, the centre-backs for this year is, unfortunately, to not play a sad because he's going to be cup-tied, as you can see, ineligible uh, for this game against Benfica, having already represented Porto in the Champions League. But we do have McMaster and, of course, Mustafa, and I think the long-term plan really is going to be to partner Mustafa uh, with the, the new man, Assad. I feel like those two guys could be a really good kind of centre-back partnership. As much as I've enjoyed McMaster, and I think he's contributed a lot since he's joined the 27-year-old Australian um, I don't feel like at £15 million he's perhaps been worth the money. I, I, not to say he's a bad player, certainly, but you look at the rest of our back four kind of in the defence. We have world-class fullbacks. We have a world-class centre-back, in my opinion, at least in Mustafa, who, of course, we developed ourselves. And I, I kind of feel like with McMaster, he's just a bit of a weak link. And Assad was there to be bought. He's 22 years old. McMaster's 27. Who knows? Maybe we could sell McMaster on for a bit of money. He only joined us for £15 million. I say only, obviously. That's still a lot of money. But, you know, relative to our situation, it's not the end of the world for that to kind of be a loss that we make. But I plan to keep this guy until the end of the year at least. Who knows? Maybe he'll stay on longer just as more of a backup man. I think that's a role he could play, whether or not he'd be happy to kind of play second fiddle, I guess, to Assad and Mustafa remains to be seen. Anyway, that's kind of what's been going on over this period of time. In terms of how we're going to line up for today's game against Benfica, it's it's a tricky one, like how I want to approach this game, because I'm not entirely sure what the best way to go about trying to get a result here is going to be. We have a good team. We have got a few injuries. Rildo's out injured, which is a bit of a shame. He's out with a strained stomach muscle, but back soon. Gilvan is actually out for a very long period of time. He's torn his hamstring, was it? Yeah, torn hamstring, which is a massive shame for this guy because he's shown a ton of promise this year. So we are going to be without uh, him. He's been a, a great player for us. Mora still out with his long-term injury, the damaged cruciate knee ligaments. He's out for a while. Mini Mosca still out with his broken leg for three to five weeks. Good to see him, you know, starting to come back to fitness, but it's fair to say that that injury really has wrecked his career, and I'm hoping that he can bounce back well. But I don't know, at 19 years old to get a broken leg, in fact, no, at 20 years old to get that broken leg, it's kind of happened at a critical point in his development, and it certainly could have that knock-on effect, which I'm fearful of. Anyway, in terms of our team for today's game, I actually kind of agree with a lot of what my assistants picked here. We do need to get another centre mid on the bench, though. Let's sort that out. I think we'll play Palermo. We've got Graffite, Camilio, uh, Daniel Forster, who's actually leaving the club at the end of the year. Uh, we, we have some options here, don't we? I'm pretty happy with that team. So this is the team we're going to go with. It's going to be Young in goal, the, the the titan between the sticks. I say that every time I see him. He's just a great player. Cabocelli at left back. Nothing too kind of crazy going on there. We have Gaiganov at right back, the Ukrainian, obviously looking for a big performance from him. At centre back, we go with Mustafa and McMaster, uh, two very good kind of complementary centre backs. Obviously, Assad going to be perhaps a replacement for McMaster there, but these two guys, very, very good players and definitely capable of holding their own in this kind of game. In midfield, at centre defensive mid, we go with kind of Ishmael JJ, 28 years old, now the Ivorian. Still got absolutely insane physical, still a very, very good player athletically kind of like that in my centre mids, alongside him, the one, the only, Joe Bouchard, the Canadian. I don't know how many appearances he's now made at the club, but it's a hell of a lot. I'm hoping he could have another memorable one, of course, here today. Playing at the central attack in mid-roll, we are going to be playing Sebastian Girard there. Still not fully mastered this role by any means, um, but hopefully he can continue to pick it up. He's picked up, as I mentioned, fairly well. You can see he's improved a lot as a player, and um, I'm desperately hoping, really, that this guy can go on to be a, a real linchpin in this centre attack in mid-roll, potentially with two strikers ahead, or at least certainly Mosca ahead. 
Anyway, on the left-hand side, we go with Paul Smith, the Australian. Of course, he had that long-term injury earlier on in the year, out for two months with a hip injury, which was actually a little bit less than what he was originally uh, feared to be out for. So that was good, you know, to get him back a little bit sooner than we expected. At right mid, we go with Junior, the Brazilian. I feel like this guy's got a little bit of a point to prove, but 15 assists and eight goals in the Premier Division so far is a really good performance uh, by him thus far this year. Hopefully he can kind of continue that in Europe. And uh, leading the line for today's game, we of course have the number nine, Mosca up top. The rest of the team, we have Felix uh, as our backup goalkeeper here on the bench. We then have Yves Frigere, the kind of Gibraltarian centre-back. Hopefully he can, again, put in a good performance. He's actually been dropped in recent games from the Gibraltar national side, which is a little bit of a shame. Uh, you can see Graffite here, uh, but of course, a very kind of useful player to have. Can just play so many different positions for us. Good to have on the bench. We, of course, have Graffite Senior, Junior, Junior, he's younger, um, the left-back. And uh, he's a very good player as well, of course. Again, useful player to have can play both sides. We have Camilio as a centre-mid option in the team. The 27-year-old Brazilian joined us this year for a, a small fee of £1.1 million. I'd be a liar if I was to say he set the world alight, but that's not really what I brought him in the club to do. I brought him in to be a backup in this kind of game where we have got a few injuries to centre-mids and I need someone who's capable to kind of step up to the plate if need be and be counted and I think he can do that for us anyway as I mentioned Forster already agreed to a move in principle to move to Freiburg at the end of the year which is a real shame um, but hopefully he will continue to kind of give it his all whilst his contract remains kind of valid at our club he's going to be on the bench today obviously good that he can play both wings and well our option on the bench in terms of striking options is going to be Walid Gwendouz uh, the Belgium. New player on the block, new kid. Hopefully he can put in a performance if we need him to. Anyway, before we get into the game, I feel weird doing this now having done a squad rundown. Uh, you can see the results here since the kind of last matches uh, and the last episode you saw. Some really good results there all in all, um, especially the win against Gibraltar Lions. It is worth noting, we only beat Red Imps 1-0, which was a little bit of a concern. They didn't actually have a shot on goal, but it was actually Karansi with a last-minute goal who got it for us. This guy, a player who I don't necessarily see as a successor to fire loss in kind of being a backup left mid, but I definitely think he's a player who can benefit from the kind of extra room we have in the first team for a left winger to really emerge and stand up and be counted, and I'm hoping that this guy can do that for us. The 19-year-old, a player who was tipped to have a lot of potential when I signed him last year, uh, in fact this year, but yeah, hoping he can really put in a, a good performance and perhaps set the league alight when we need him to. But he got a 92nd minute goal there to get us a win, which was a really, really vital result ultimately. Anyway, that isn't what I wanted to talk about. What I wanted to talk about was the Gibraltar national team. Now, you'll know that there was a World Cup campaign that started a little while ago now. Uh, you'll notice here, Gibraltar, they're up to 57th in the world rankings. Can we have a round of applause for Gallardo? Round of, round of applause. He's done better than I expected him to, to be fair. Anyway, in terms of what they've been doing, you can see they've got a friendly against Kazakhstan. But if we look at the, the World Cup qualifying here, obviously this has spanned the last kind of seven or eight months. They've done really well. I've got, I've got, to, I've got to praise this guy. He's got a lot out of this team. They've got four wins, three draws, and three defeats in a World Cup qualifiers. And ultimately, they uh, really did themselves proud. They finished third in the group stage of the qualifying for the FIFA World Cup, finishing behind the Ukraine and uh, the Netherlands, which, I mean, if you ask me, that is a really good kind of performance to, you know, be ahead of Serbia, Latvia, Liechtenstein. Um, that really can't be underestimated as a feat, and I'm hoping that they're going to go from strength to strength, Gibraltar. I'm kind of surprised of how well they did there. To win more games than they lost is really a massive achievement, and uh, well, hopefully they can build off that going into the, of course, the Euros coming up in the near future. So anyway, that's something just to be aware of there. Let's get into this game against Benfica. We have our team selection. You know the team. I'm hoping we can have a good performance here today. Benfica, slightly favourites. Apparently, we have enough about ourselves to see off the fret. Apparently, they've got a few injuries as well. Leonardo Rocca's out injured. He is their centre mid. He is out for two to three months. How long is their Rebelio Jose out for? I didn't even notice he was out. He's out for up to three weeks. He will probably be back for the second leg then. And uh, Wakwim as well is out. So they're missing a few strikers. So hopefully we can really take advantage of that today. Anyway, you may have noticed there that the top goal scorer in the Champions League at the moment is our former man for AC Milan. And it's Van Dijk, which is nice to see. Um, he was a good player for us. Of course, we moved him on for £10 million. Kind of surprised he's doing as well as he is in the Champions League. For modesty, he never looked like that kind of player for us. But clearly AC Milan getting the, the most out of the 30-year-old now uh, Dutch player. Anyway, let's see what we can do here. This is a, a challenge. You know, we, we don't have the easiest draw because we finished second in our group. But Benfica with some injuries. We're at home. 
We're going to play a 4 2 3 1, and we're really going to try and take the game to them. I feel like last year we really raised the bar in terms of what our expectation should be in the Champions League group stage. I feel like for the last few years, it's been a very much a case of let's get to the quarterfinals and we'll be happy with that. I feel like with the result last year, we really want to push on a little bit further. Gerard, what a run. What a goal. Take a bow, my son. He steps up to the big occasion. I mean, that was a really nice solo goal. I thought he was just going to smash it over in one of those pointless highlights you occasion occasionally get in FM. But that was a really nice goal. Moscow with a, a, a gashed head. We're going to keep him on. He's got a bandage on. He'll be fine. But uh, Gerard, nice little run there. And it was a, a composed finish. Perhaps the keeper should do a little bit better there. But nevertheless, the Belgium, of course, playing in that centre-attacking mid-roll. A role he is still yet to master. Getting a goal, and that's really encouraging signs. That's definitely where I see him perhaps playing for us long-term. Either way, though... Perfect start here against Manfica. Looking at the stats, we are bossing possession and they are yet to have a shot on goal. And now we have a set piece. Junior whips it in. It's cleared away. JJ, give it back to Junior. Gives it to Bouchard. Now Junior has it. Whips the ball in. And it's Mosca with the goal with his gashed head. He doubles our lead. And in fact, I'm a liar. It's an own goal. Gonzalez apparently has put this into his own goal. It really looked like a... Uh, a header for Moscow, we might be able to get a better angle here, but Junior, the right midfielder, whips in, and, well, yeah, you can see it there. I don't think Gonzalez expects Mosca to leave it, and it's just hit the defender on the head and gone in the way he's facing, and we'll take it. Benfica yet to have a shot on goal. We've only had one shot on target ourselves, and it's gone in. Cannot complain about that. Mosca with the gash head is perhaps a little bit concerning. He's not putting in the best performance in the world, but certainly a debate to say make the change, although we have a chance of Geiganov. Junior with the rebound, he's not offside, it's a rout, ladies and gentlemen. It's 3-0 after 30 minutes, of course. We know given how we kind of performed against, was it Barcelona a few years ago, where they were 3-0 up at home against us and we went on to win. We know that this isn't kind of a, a, a result that can't be turned around for Benfica. But in the first 30 minutes of this game, the first kind of sixth of this tie, we found ourselves 3-0 up and Cabaselli wins it there. Now Girard up to Mosca. That gashed head definitely not affected this performance so far. Junior out on the right. Lays it off to Geiganov, who crosses it. I thought that was about to go flying in. Really would have been the cherry on top of the cake for this performance so far. Keeper did collect it, and now, well, now they're bringing the ball forward here. Nazim lays it off. And Benfica looking lethal here, and they actually get a goal. Young perhaps should have done a little bit better, but it was a good goal in the end by Nazim. Just kind of squeezed it in. Some good little interplay. And, well, Benfica, for the first time in this game, really threatening. And with their second shot on goal, it's a nice finish. Keeper should probably do better there. It wasn't right in the corner. It was at quite a comfortable height. Young, perhaps a little bit disappointing there. My assistant is really desperate for me to take off Mosca. At the moment, his condition is holding up. Um, so I think I think we're going to keep him on. It's 3-1 at the moment, though. Shame to give away that away goal, but... I mean, we really can't fault the performance so far. If we can perform like this in the second half, you know, maybe get a few more goals, we are going to be in a really good position going into that away tie and the uh, away leg against Benfica. Of course, it's always good when you're the home team playing the first tie. Kind of really to get your noses ahead, kind of get a, get a good understanding of the team, you know, try and come away with a good result. And, well, let's see what we can do here. Mosca bring the ball forward. Can we make this a great result? We have a good result right now. Cross held in the end. Unfortunately, didn't go across the line. And now Carnu Smith. Nice win by Mustafa there. Um, Mosca lays it out wide to Gaiganov. He cuts inside. This is a really nice play. Gerard Mosca with space intercept tackled. But the attack's not over. Ball through Mosca. Can he bury it? He's offside. He's hit the post anyway. It was a very narrow angle. You really wanted him to cut it back, but he didn't there. But we might have a chance of our own. Gaiganov whips it in. Cleared away. And now Nazim. To try and make something happen. But Gaiganov wins it. Gerard. Acres of space. Can he lay him off? He doesn't need to. I thought he was going to lay off Mosca. Second goal of the game for him. A really nice goal yet again. Gaiganov with the assist. The right back. A lovely little threaded through ball. And Gerard. Well he's on a booking. But he doesn't care. Knocks it past his man. Uses that 19 acceleration. To create the opportunity for himself. And just squeezes it in. And it's 4-1. And we are. We're, we're on cloud nine right now. I'm going to make a change here. I feel like Mosca. He's been good for us, but he's not been crazily good. And with that gashed head, I don't really want to risk it. We're going to bring in Gwendouz, the young Belgium, just to give him a chance. Give him a taster of the Champions League, of course. Joining us from Standard Liège for £16 million. Pounds. Very much brought him in as a hot prospect. But at the same time, when you pay £16 million pounds for a hot prospect, you very much expect that player to be a player who can contribute in the first team. And that's what we're going to be looking for from him today. And, well, the first thing he's contributed towards is Benfica well, scoring against us. I feel like that's harsh to, to argue that he's contributed towards that. 
not not even involved in the play jack you're just looking for someone to blame it's Nazim we're a second goal of the game and perhaps giving Benfica a little bit of hope here you know two away goals is a nice little total to come away with and really from our perspective we're looking now to get another goal we might get a chance here Girard can he get the hat trick it's saved this time by Tuati uh in goal and uh well a lifeline given perhaps Cabacelli commits a foul I thought he'd been fouled himself there there was a bit of tussling going on in the box Looking at the stats, though, it's been a really good performance. Can we defend this set piece? Nassim gets a hat trick. I mean, statistically, we've been very good in this game. Unfortunately, the scoreline reads 4 3 now. And um, we, we have to be a little bit worried. It's a good goal. He's got a hat trick. He, he, he's free at the near post. It's not great defending. And you'd probably say this result right now, whilst it's a good result for us to come away, you know, with the win and with the lead, three away goals is pretty poor. Anyway, I'm going to make some changes here. I'm actually going to bring in Free Jair, I think, for McMaster. And uh, I'm also going to take off JJ for Graffite. I think JJ on a booking, not worth risking him. He's not had a great performance either. Let's just get some fresh legs on defensively, try and share ourselves up for the remainder of this game. 4 3 would still not be a bad result, really, to come away with the win. But you'd have to say, given some of the chances we've had, given how uh, good we've looked, it's a shame that we've conceded free from. I don't want to say avoidable situations, but you look at the knit free kind of header on the corner, that's certainly avoidable. And, um, well, they've kind of hit us on the break a little bit here, Benfica. To be fair, it's been a very 50-50 game in terms of possession. Shots have been even as well. But with 30 seconds left, it looks like that's going to be all she wrote. Although, Benfica, late chance. Carnu hits the woodwork. Oh, my gosh, Mustafa. Just get it out, boys. Get it out. Headed away. Cabaselli. No nonsense from him. Well, they, that almost turned into a tragedy right there. At 4-4, we would have come away from this tie losers. Frigier deals with it there. It's full time. We have to hold on to the win in the end, but we do get it. It's a good performance to build upon, hopefully going into the second leg. Mosca did well. Um, Nazim with the hat-trick, of course, getting the man of the match award. A very good player, this guy, the Turkish forward. Um, a player who perhaps I'm secretly hoping might be injured for the away tie because he really has shown kind of his worth to Benfica right there. Anyway, Moscow out for five to eight days. He can play with protective equipment. Isn't going to trouble me too much just because, well, if we look here, you can see the actual Benfica game isn't until the 15th of March. So we now have a month uh, with three or four fixtures in between. Really, the main aim here has got to be to try and avoid injuries where we can. Anyway, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this episode so far. Of course, we've got that second leg to look forward to. Stick around. And yeah, future Jack, take it away. Let's get into it and hopefully make our way into the quarterfinals. Okay, guys, so we're back here for the second leg against Benfica. Uh, since that last game, just a few results. Nothing too significant, really. Just lots of really good wins. We beat Leo 10-0. Gibraltar Phoenix 12-0 was a good result. And actually, Gwen Dews has been getting a hell of a lot of goals. He's got 11 in three uh, Primera Division starts and two appearances off the bench. So he is firing in goals at the new club. And he's already starting to improve, which is really promising. And I'm hoping he can continue to do that. And we will, of course, try and get him as much first-team football as we can. And, well, you can see here... He's got goals when he's played so far, which is really, really pleasing. Anyway, today we're going to be taking on Benfica. It's away from home, of course. 4-3 uh, was the first egg result. It says the team, we are going to play a very similar team to how we started the game. The only change I'm actually going to make uh, from the squad that played the last match is uh, Graffite is going to come and play centre mid for us ahead of JJ. I think JJ has been a little bit disappointing, um, so we're going to drop him. Uh, worth noting, Gerard is now fully competent at playing centre attacking mid. It feels like he's picked up that role really quickly, really. Um, he's had it for maybe five or four, four or five months, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, but regardless, for him to pick up that position so quickly is really pleasing. Um, and obviously the ability to, I believe, uh, kind of learn roles quicker is adaptability. I believe adaptability affects ability to learn new roles and also ability to play in foreign countries. I might be wrong there. Someone let me know if I'm talking out my arse. Um, but yeah, he's developed well. He's still improving, which is good. And hopefully he can put in a good performance today. So it's going to be the 4-2-3-1 that we stick with. And in terms of how Napoli, uh, not Napoli, Benfica are going to play this game. They're playing with a lot of strikers. A 4 3 Free. Now, part of me almost feels like playing uh, our narrower system, but we're committed to this system now. We'll see how we get on. Uh, Going to try and encourage the players as well. We can actually fairly easily switch to the narrow system. So if it starts to go kind of tits up early on, we've got options. We can change it with Smith playing at striker. Gerard can drop back about central attacking mid roll. Junior can tuck in on the right hand side. Um, you know, the team that we've got out here can adapt to our narrower system if we need to without any subs, which is really nice. And it offers a few opportunities. Can we score straight from kickoff? Gaiganov whips it in. Mosca nods it down. No one there. Graffite out to Gaiganov. Whips it in. Girard hits the post. 
would have been the dream start. Girard, of course, grabbed a brace in the first leg of this tie, and well, he almost got this kind of tie off to an ideal start for us, of course. Um, really, we need a draw here or a win by more than. Uh, well, I was about to say a win by more than two goals, but really just a win at all. Uh, a loss really isn't great for us. We, if we, if we want to lose, we have to score free and lose. So really, the, the bottom line is we've got to try and attack here. We've got to try and make something happen. But so far, fairly promising, I think it's fair to say. Although that was the case in the first leg, and well, Benfica are bringing the ball forward here, stretching us quite wide here on the left hand side. Ball whipped in back post, Gallardo. Has that gone in off the crossbar? It has. And, uh, well, Benfica would be going through on away goals if things were to end right now. Of course, they're not going to end right now. There's another 81 minutes in this match. And, well, from what I've seen so far, I'm not going to get disheartened too soon here. The ball to the back post, though, a little bit disappointing that it couldn't be dealt with. I think it's Giganov leaps and, I don't know, Jung perhaps carries it a little bit into the goal. But, regardless, it's a good goal for Benfica. And, it, well, it sees them get that early lead. Young perhaps could have done a little bit better. Uh, it's worth noting, actually, that we have qualified for the Champions League now uh, for next year by finishing top two in the group stage. Uh, in Not the group stage, in our league, because that's the teams that get European football. And um, as a result of that, our board kind of budgets have been set for the year. We have a transfer budget of £34 million and a wage budget of £1.2 million. But, well, I need to stop talking about the money. Let's talk about what's happening on this pitch. It's 2-0 to Benfica. The reason I was going to bring that up was because we've got a little bit of money and I'm thinking about getting maybe a new goalkeeper of some real quality if there's one around for a reasonable price because it's not been good enough. Young, I don't know if Gaiganov blocks him off there on the line. But while Benfica are two goals up, I was about to make a tactical change. If they score again now, I'm going to regret not being more spontaneous and kind of instantaneous with my save, uh, with my saves, with my... Tactical decisions. It's 3-0. What has happened, boys? What has happened in this game? I don't even know. It's been awful. It's actually been awful so far, right? That's the change we're going to make. What the hell have I witnessed? It's 3-0 to Benfica. It's 3-0. We need goals. Lots of them. And we do have a penalty, so that's something. Is it Mosca to take it? It must be Mosca. Or is it Gerard? It is Mosca. Can he score it? Bang! Roof the net. That is a good response there, right before half-time. Um, it's 3-1 here. We need two more goals. We play. If we can get 3-3, three, three, that is good enough to carry us through. 3-2 three, in favour of Benfica. We're out on away goals. Really, we need to just try and score three goals. Because if we score three goals and don't concede, 3-3 three, three would see us go through. If we concede again here, we still need three goals to take it to extra time. And, well... The, the situation doesn't change too massively. You know, basically, we've got to get to three goals. That is the golden number right now to reach to really give ourselves a chance in this game. But at the same time, we do need to defend well. And uh, we really can't afford to go too gung-ho in our attacks. And, but we need to defend here. Kayala whips the ball in. It's Rebelio Jose to score. It's 4-1 now. And, uh, well, simply put, it's not been good enough. I'm wondering about changing the system, you know. They're playing with three strikers and it seems to be causing us some problems. Especially with two centre-backs. I'm wondering about bringing on a third centre-back. And how I'd change it. So it'd probably be something like move Cavacelle and Gaiganov up. To maybe play... I guess I'd, I'd probably play them at complete wing-back support. Should I work out how I do this? This is something I've never like contemplated doing with this team. Um... I feel like it'd be something like this that we play. Maybe. Well, Fise can play centre-back, so that's not the end of the world. I think we've got to give it a go, haven't we? We've got to try something here. I'm going to play an advance forward alongside a poacher there. Um, I mean, this isn't what I really what I wanted to do this game, like kind of drastically change things, but I feel like we've got to at this point. It's not been good enough so far. And, uh, well, we need we need goals. We need we need to make something happen. So we're going to try and make something happen. Apparently that was a good first half. It definitely wasn't, assistant. <laughs> we need two goals. And we need to not concede to take it to extra time. If we concede another here, we need three goals. And that would be enough for away goals. But really, I'm talking about all these different scenarios. The bottom line is we have to get to three goals and not concede. That's got to be the aim. I'm going to try and do that by playing this three at the back formation. I mean, looking at the stats, Benfica have been all over us, really, for most of this game. 
Let's let's chuck a few more men forward. We've kind of got to at this point. I'm going to be Girard to play as a complete forward on attack down the middle. We're going to play with our fullbacks on complete fullback attack. Uh, what else do I want to change here? Paul Smith's had a really poor game up top, so I'm going to bring in. I think I'm going to bring in Rildo for now. I might make another change there. I think we'll go with that one change now. We're gonna, we've got to go for it, as I said. Like we, we need goals. There is no point in sitting back at this point. It's four one to Benfica. It's been comfortable for them, really. We've got a set piece though. Ball whipped in. Mustafa's header is not what we needed, and now well, it's Benfica to hit us on the counter. Gallardo down this left hand side. Lays it off to Torres. Gonzalez scores. That's game over. That is game over. And this has been, well, I knew it was going to be a tough game. And we have achieved the board expectation to get to the first round. But the bottom line is this just hasn't been good enough. Gonzalez, I mean, Young should probably do a little bit better. Embarrassing, really. Really embarrassing. Oh, dear. Junior, can we make something happen? Pride. Can I, say, I mean, that's an insane save. Gerard probably should have scored. Nice save, though. Gaiganov. What can we make happen here? Mosca, can he get the ball into the box? He can. Gerard's there. I mean, it can't be more than a consolation, can it? We need two goals. Two goals and we'd go through on away goals. That's the that's the, that's the bottom line right now. I'm going to take off. I know Girard just scored. He's not been great for us. I might bring on Gwendouz. We'll go for it. We're going to make that change. We've got 17 minutes left to try and make something happen in this game. Make that three minutes. The time has just gone so quickly. We're going on overload. We're going to go for it, but there is, there's no time left here. It's unfortunate. A really, really disappointing display. The first leg was such a great result in principle, especially at 3-0. We let them back into the game. It was some poor marking from set pieces. And in this game, Benfica have brought us to their own backyard. And, well, they've shown us how to play football right there. Disappointing, I think, would be an understatement. You know, to reach the semi-final last year, to get knocked out in the first knockout round. But at the same time... It's always going to be a battle in Europe for us, even with the improvements we're making. I definitely look at the midfield now and the goalkeeper position now as positions that we do need to improve in. Uh, if we just take a quick look at the club coefficients, uh, you can see that Gibraltar's currently in 12th this year. They've got a 6.0, which is actually going to see us drop. It is going to see us drop in the coefficients again. So this year we're actually playing with a uh, Champions League group stage spot automatically given to the team who finished top which is looking like it's going to be us, but well, Belgium have stepped up this year, and that means that they're going to go ahead of us, so it doesn't look like that's going to be on the cards, unless Gibraltar Lions are still in the Europa League, which I'm not sure if they are, actually. Let's check. Let's have a look. So they finished third in their... No, second in their group. In the Europa League, yeah, you can see here they got knocked out to AC Milan. Uh, actually, it was a pretty tight game as well. They lost 5-3 on aggregate, but at the same time, that's no consolation, really. Bottom line is they're getting knocked out, so the coefficient's going to drop a little bit, of course, lots of money still coming into the league. The league rep itself should improve in terms of our club coefficient. Uh, it's going to drop ever so slightly this year, but it's still going to be very, very good. And, well, to be the 17th or 18th highest rep team um, in Europe is still a really, really good feat. And actually, it looks like we might, we might increase by a few spots this year. So that's something potentially to keep an eye out on. I must be honest, it's been a really disappointing season uh, in terms of how we performed in Europe, or at least... I guess how well we're doing in the league has been our saving grace. Um, but no, I, I kind of look at the situation, what's going on. You know, Gibraltar Lions are starting to spend a lot more money. They've spent £54 million now uh, in this transfer window. You'll notice that Gibraltar Lions' reputation is two and a half star. I believe our reputation is up to three stars, which is progress. Yeah, you can see here. So that's really good. Uh, hopefully that can continue to improve. Hopefully it can have a bit more of a jump in the summer. If we just quickly quick flick through the other Gibraltarian sides... It's worth noting, of course, they're rich, but their reputations are also starting to rise from playing in a league that's certainly emerging and uh, growing in reputation as a league. So that's good to see, of course. All these teams are getting all the TV money that we're getting, but they're not investing it like we are in big players for big, big money. And a lot of them, they're going to be sat with a few hundred million pounds in the bank, and there's going to come a point, really, where their reputation reaches a point where they can start to perhaps attract players from the lower leagues of England... You know, from League One, the championship, they can come over and start to really, you know, build themselves up. And hopefully that's going to happen over the next few years, certainly. Anyway, disappointing to end the season. It feels like we're ending it prematurely by me feeling like next episode's going to be the final one. 
if I say, as I said, I'm disappointed, that would be a massive understatement. At the same time, we have reached the board's minimum expectation. I think it feels like more of a kick in the teeth just because this is the first time we've been knocked out in the knockout round, in the first knockout round for a number of years. You know, we've consistently reached the quarterfinals and stuff, and unfortunately, uh, Benfica have proven to be our kryptonite today. Anyway, that is all from me, guys. Thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash the like button. If you've got any comments, feel free to leave them down below. Of course, we've got the new addition in Assad at centre-back, so hopefully he can do something for us in the league, hopefully develop a little bit, because he is still only 22, and uh, obviously we're going to be trying to get the most out, out of our players for the remainder of the year. There's not actually that many games left. I'll, of course, be back with the end-of-season review, something to look forward to there. Um, it's actually not for a little while, so... Uh, keep an eye out for that. Hopefully I'll see you guys for that one. It will be episode 136, I want to say. Um, will be a good one. I'm not sure who it's going to be against just yet. But regardless, hopefully I'll see you guys for that one. It is me, Jack. And I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.